this is Fantasy Ask, and welcome back to The Sims 4 Royal Witch Kingdoms. We are continuing today with the noble family of Sisita, who have been going through quite a turbulent marriage. So, in the previous episode, we had so many crazy things happened. One of which was High Lady Alicent being called to the palace by High King Yorick after being visited by Queen Nala in her own house. So that happened. Obviously, Lord Adrian wasn't happy about it, and he had something to say when she came back from her excursion to the palace. It was very late at night, and as you could see in the movie, it was raining, there was a thunderstorm happening. Very, very dark, right? So they had, at first, she kind of said, no, we're not discussing this. It was official business, which, you know, it wasn't really official business. They didn't do anything when she was there, except for her... Uh, being naked in the rain, and then of course, hiking Yorick, taking off his pants. A lot of things happened. So, we were going through that. She didn't want to talk about it. And then later on, he went to her chambers and was trying to cozy up to her. But then, in his burning curiosity to find out if the king noticed her physical state, he went ahead and prodded asking some questions, and these two are both geniuses, I've mentioned this in the previous episode, they're always going to be trying to outwit each other and, you know, feed the interaction somehow into whatever, whatever goals they have. So whether or not they're true to each other, I mean, we've seen that Lord Adrian is loyal to Alessand, but he does have his own his own plans for their relationship and his own desires, which he's going to use his smarts, his wits, um, to fulfill. And a tad bit of manipulation, right? It goes both ways, I'm sure. So he kind of let it slip. She understood. She didn't need to be told flat out what really he was wanting to know. And um, she was a little bit outraged. She didn't want to see him, told him to get out. And they've been on a better terms this morning. So she is in her second trimester, as I have mentioned. They keep going to each other and, you know, interacting with each other, so that's kind of interesting. Lord Adrian is a bit of an awkward situation right now because he obviously is very possessive and feels jealous and doesn't want Alison to go to the High King, but he's not the head of the house. So he can... He can cry about it as much as he wants. He can wail about it as much as he wants, but he doesn't have a right to control what she's doing. For example, if she told him, if she told him to stay put and not go to the queen, he would have to listen. But he can't tell her what to do because she's the head of the house. That's the way things run in this family. But they are good friends, as you can see. Now, another thing, this is has nothing to do with the story. It's just fascinating to me. They both hate dancing, so I don't know why they keep dancing. This is one of the strange things about... The Sims, autonomous actions your Sims are made to do, and then their preferences. It just doesn't align, because all the Sims, every time, want to dance. They'll just go to the music and start dancing. But these two hate dancing, so why, whenever I turn the like radio off over here, they go back and turn it on and continue dancing. You guys should stop. Seriously. But we are picking up. Um, it's like afternoon, 3 p.m. at this point, but they have some interesting whims going on. Um, now, I'm not sure what this is because I just saw it. She wants to become friends with High Lord Ignatius, which to me makes sense. They are the other noble family in Sikar. The whole reason High Lady Alicent is even trying to cozy up to the High King is because she wants a head start for her family. She wants her family to get any and all good benefits that the royal family might give. Um, so she's got that she wants to work on, and I'm definitely going to encourage that. She already has given them big news, uh, like the last time she went to visit, which was when Adrian was running away from Queen Ala. So, yeah. Now, Adrian, he's also got a whim that I'm very, very interested in. As we know, he's not happy with this whole arrangement going on between his wife and the High King. And suddenly, this morning, uh, he got the whim to chat with Hiking Yorick. So, he's wanting to go visit the palace. <laughs> and I don't know how High Lady Alicent's gonna feel about that, because she 
isn't someone who likes being questioned um, by Adrian. I feel like she tries to please him and entertains his interests and concerns, but at the same time, when enough is enough, it is enough. Um, she's not going to talk about it, but let's get these two changed. Um, so we can invite over maybe High Lord Ignatius. I don't think they'd want to go out on a trip today because it is raining. Nope, no, it is raining, so I don't think they would want to go out. Okay, and then you can get changed as well. You need to clean all of these dishes up. And apparently, Lady Elsa and High Lady Elsa and likes romantic music, so that's kind of nice. But she's going to invite over High Lord Ignatius. Uh, let's see if he's going to be willing to come. And they'll just try and get closer. I think this is totally part of her wanting to build connections. Yep, he is going to be right over. So I think that's the whole goal behind that. She wants to make sure that she has all of her bases covered. Now I don't think her wanting to befriend High Lord Ignatius is romantic, like it is with Hiking Yorick, because we know what they did in Ignatius' like um, estate in the previous episode, right? <laughs> we know what these two did. And Ignatius was there. He was kind of getting grossed out by it. So there we go. He's coming over. And so they're both probably aware that it's off limits to go there with each other, but I, I do think that they want to form a bit of an official relationship here, friendship. Okay, let's... Don't invite to feel the baby. Invite inside. Okay, he's just going to come on inside. Excellent. She also wants to kiss Adrian on the cheek, so we'll do that. Let's see. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I saw it for a second. There we go. She's really happy. She's in a happy mood and now she's flirty. Okay, she'll do- it's a bit awkward. Every time- <laughs> I feel like every time Ignatius is with them, it's like, guys, can you just stop for a second and have a conversation with me? Like, whether it's in his house or their house, they're just all over each other, calm down. Okay, now she's going to give him some gush about partner. Why not gush about partner in front of your partner and make Adrian feel better about it? Now, I don't think Adrian would tell Alessand that he plans to visit the king at the palace. I don't think he would. But let's... Why not? Share big news again. Chat with him. Uh, fret about dancing. She doesn't like dancing, as I said. Discuss neighborhood changes, the fact that children are being born. Uh, they might even talk about the high princess that was born quite recently. Look at this, she keeps having all these romantic whims because she's flirty, but no, no, we want to be friendly. We want to be friendly. Let's ask about his hobbies and skills, what he likes. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Ask about his wife. Okay. Alicent, he likes fitness, that's good to know, but this is, this is rude, Alicent. You should, guys, get a break, guys. Take a flippin' break, okay? You have a guest. Talk to your guest. Let's sit. I'm gonna get her to sit down. They need to stop. They need to calm down. <laughs> okay. Let's continue chatting. Please don't do anything bloody. Ask about taste in music because she likes romantic music. And then we'll go ahead. Let's see. Ask about favorite color. Maybe about his day. I don't know how much effort it's going to take to actually become friends with High Lord Ignatius. This is also pretty cool. Her eyes are purple and Ignatius has purple skin, so I kind of like that. I kind of like that, but my goodness, it's been thunderstorming like crazy this past couple of days in Sikar. Let's see. Let's go ahead. Okay, they're having a bit of a pleasant conversation now. Let's... Um, complain about the thunderstorms. Heck yeah. Let's complain about thunderstorms. Don't dance with him. You don't like dancing. Joke. Are you guys old friends? Joke about old times. She might joke to him about their visit to 
the palace. I don't know what exactly you would have to joke about there. It's going to be dangerous if you're joking about the royal family, right? Um, and really, the only other terrible thing that happened was the wife of Ignatius sitting on the king's throne, which he's still probably not that happy about. Let's share some ideas. Let's go ahead and talk about the thunderstorm. You know, general chat about the weather. Gossip about the neighbors, aka the royal family. Um, yeah. It's kind of awkward between them, but then it's kind of good. Let's try and compliment. A heartfelt compliment. That's friendly, right? I hope so. We're going to tell him a funny story. Ah, oh, look at that. You make my day so much better. Thanks for making me smile. I feel like... <laughs> uh, look at that. He, Adrian has this dislike kind of bubble on top of his head. I feel like anytime she's going to make the effort to be friendly with someone else or a bit too friendly with someone else, he's going to start getting... He's going to start getting conscious and upset and he was fine until she had that sentiment and he's like wait what why does he make you feel that happy hmm and he's making things awkward adrian stop i hope he's not having a fight with ignatius that would not be cool um tell joke about when we say martians i'm i'm thinking that they're probably discussing the other kingdoms i feel as though some of the nobles with the different kingdoms might have a bit of a superiority complex when it comes to, like, for example, the people in Sikar might have a superiority complex when it comes to the people of Ramon and Tolkien and, you know, vice versa. It might be a thing that happens. So, they're being civil over there. Good to note. Good to note. Um, yes, let's joke about the Martians. I don't know if you want to hug him exactly. Tell a dramatic story. Tell dramatic stories. Um, and if anything, if ever she has official business, um, there's a lot of things for Adrian to get jealous of her. One, he refused, she refused to tell him what happened at the palace. Um, even if it was actually official business, she would never discuss that sort of thing with Adrian. She would discuss it with High Lord Ignatius, though, because he is the head of another noble family, so that makes sense. And I don't think that would sit too well with Adrian. That's just another thing that would make him upset over time. So, who knows? Their marriage, I don't know if it's going to work out, in all honesty, because... How do you function? Look at that. Now he's upset and he's yelling at her. Adrian, time out, boy. Time out. Don't do that. Don't do that. Look at him. He's whining. Over what, though? Oh, good. No, 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 no. See, look. You chased away... Ign you chased away High Lord Ignatius. What's this? Okay. He's feeling very possessive now. What's this? See, look, I told you guys, jealous pegs. He's getting jealous. We were just having, I think Alicent even thought, what is he doing? He's, yeah, he's being jealous. See, he's being jealous. Alicent even invited High Lord Ignatius to their home so that Adrian wouldn't have a reason to be, like, to doubt and be whiny and all of those kind of things. She was trying to appease him like she was last time. Um... But no, even that he had a problem with because Alessand was getting a bit too friendly. She wasn't even being flirty, but she was getting comfortable with High Lord Ignatius and Adrian was like, just nope, not happening, not happening. So Ignatius has kindly excused himself. He's leaving. He's going home now. Adrian's being jealous and now he kind of wants to assert himself. He wants to ask to feel the baby. So let's let's do that. Jeez, dude. Let's see. Let's go ahead. Ask to feel a baby. So that's going to make him feel better, hopefully. He's trying to assert himself here, but he's very lucky that Alicent even gives him as much emotional freedom as she does. I feel as though if, if it was Kandrico, for example... <laughs> If this is Kandrika or Nala, they would be like, no. 
shut it and just stay. Like, I, I don't think he would be able to throw as much of a fit as he is. And now he wants to offer her a rose. So let's go do that. Let's see. He's trying to validate the fact that he's the center of her universe, which really, <laughs> I don't know if he is, but he's trying. Look at that. He wants to woohoo. So let's, let's go do that. Let's, let's go encourage this. Is Alicent, see Alicent is not really having specific, she's flirty, but she's not having specific romantic wants for him. Okay, that didn't work out too well. What are they doing? Nope, they're dancing now. Come on, come on, we need to get this done. Let's go ahead and where is it? Where is it? Let's just go do the regular woohoo. Come on. Come on. Let's get going. Let's get going. This is not stuff... I... What do you guys think about Alicent? How do you think she actually feels about Adrian? Because I'm still not sure how she feels about Adrian. I don't know if she sees him as an asset to the family, which is why she is so patient with his jealous pangs or if she genuinely cares for him as her partner and as a result of that you know it's it's just understood that she's going to care about how he feels what do you think because i'm i'm confused i don't really know this is kind of interesting but this is, this couple I feel like has had the most drama, but I am still unclear about, about their relationship. Now, in terms of the birth chamber for this particular house or this estate, I've gone ahead and made this area, like I rearranged this room a little bit and I made this area the birth chamber. Um, and I kept it separate to, I could, I guess I could have turned it into a nursery, but I like having the three because I do see them having hopefully many children um so i do want to keep the beds there that's fine but i figured i initially wanted to put it in alisan's room but then because they have a lot of space but i figured you know what let's not do that because i i don't yeah i don't want the babies to wake them up so there we go alisan's asleep now and seeing as that she is, I feel as though Lord Adrian would take this time to head to the palace on a secret visit and um, have a bit of a chat with Hiking York. Lord Adrian has just arrived at the palace and oh goodness, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but he's terrified of the thunderstorm. And now he's gonna go scream incoherently at Queen Nala. Is he really screaming about the thunderstorm though? Or is it about... Is it about um, hiking Yorick? I don't know. I've never really seen this interaction though. So if he, if he is gonna go through with it, I kinda wanna see what it is. Are you gonna go scream at the Queen? I don't think it's screaming at the Queen. It's more screaming incoherently at the Queen, uh, who also seems to be scared by the thunderstorm, and High King Yorick is apparently in the conversation. It is very late though. Okay, Yorick's coming out somewhere. They're in the meditation room, and I don't know if it's because she's dancing, he can't seem to reach her. Are you coming? Oh, great. Oh great. Now now the Mad King is naked in the rain. Oh jeez. Adrian's gonna see this and you know what's gonna go through his mind? Is this what Alisand was doing at the palace? Is this what Alisand was doing at the palace? Okay, what what is this exactly? Oh jeez, look at that. He's screaming, he's wailing. Um She's kind of terrified, but I don't know if she's dancing. I have never seen this interaction. Oh my goodness. I'm, part of me is wondering 
whether or not... I mean, he obviously came here to see Hiking Yorick, but he's doing something completely different to what he thought because he's screaming incoherently at Queen Nala and I almost wonder if that visit to their estate by Queen Nala in the previous episode was in his mind and at first, you know, he was pushing her away because now I'm going to be loyal to Alicent but now that Alicent is going back and forth being a bit shifty suddenly he's thought, ah, Queen Nala so he's gone to Queen Nala, maybe he's just more comfortable approaching her um, since they have a better relationship, the Mad King is a complete mystery to him. So, here he is. I don't know if he would be talking about hiking York because he works literally just outside. Naked, mind you, but he's outside. So, I... I okay, th that did not go over too well. Um, I feel as though... You know what? He's in... Here's the thing. He's intelligent, though, so I don't know if he would talk to Queen Nala about his wife and the king if the king is right out there. Um, but he came in, has been screaming incoherently at Nala, and if he was in fact talking about them, or maybe, maybe he wasn't talking about the king, maybe he was bringing up their visit and saying, the, the, you came to visit, and, and, and maybe he's saying stuff like that, and Nala doesn't appreciate it because the king's right there. And she doesn't want Adrian to put her in a difficult position. So, hmm. Hmm. Maybe Adrian didn't think this out as well as he thought he did. So, okay. Well, he came here. The whole reason was to chat with the High King. So, he's going to... Would he complain about his problems? I feel like that is the purpose of his trip. Um, You know what he would do? Here's what I think he would do. So now that the queen... Look, the queen's even turned her back to him. So obviously him running to the queen wasn't the right thing to do. She doesn't want anything to do with him right now because the king's right there. She doesn't want to be in a difficult position, as I said. Instead, Lord Adrian is going to... He's going to backtrack a bit and he's going to do what he came here for, which is to talk to the king. He's going to complain about problems, but... The way he's going to approach this, because obviously he can't ask the king why he's calling his wife to the palace, he's going to kill two birds with one stone. He's going to say things like, oh, um, Hi Lady Alicent is in her second trimester of pregnancy. It's not the best idea for her to be moving in and out of the house so much, in her state, is going to be bad for the baby, especially with the thunderstorms, it's just not safe, and this is going to be our heir, we need to protect it. So he's trying to rub in the king's face that stay away from Alicent, she's expecting my child, and he's also trying to figure out if anything happened here. So two birds with one stone, he's going to complain about problems. And the king has not clothed himself, which is great. Okay, out in the rain, just to emphasize the fact that, yes, we are going through a thunderstorm, so please stop calling Alice into the palace. Oh, jeez. Okay, well... Adrian! Adrian! He was such a coward, Adrian. Guys, Adrian... Okay. He's trying to be the, the one with the pants in the relationship. He's trying to be the one in charge, but, ah, uh, well, in this case, he's trying to be the dress in the relationship because the dress is the one who heads the house. Um, yeah, he's trying to do that, but I don't think he realizes how intimidating the royal family is. Because, like I said, now he's running away. He quickly said that to the High King, and now he's curtailing it out of here. Adrian, 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 I really, I just don't know, guys. He's curtailing it out of here. He's obviously scared of, um, like, he's intimidated by them and he doesn't know what they're going to say or do. Um, and obviously he's not the head of a family, like I said, he is a spouse. So normally this wouldn't be something that happens. The spouses stay at home, it's the heads that go visit and interact with the royal members. So this is very much not in line with, you know, um mannerisms and courtesy, all those kind of things, it's just not, it's not decorum, not not what's done. But he's intimidated, he's just yelled his bit, he's gonna go back home. Um, so okay, 
he's going home. I don't know what Allison, I don't know if she's awake or she's still sleeping. She would have noticed that it's gone. Um, but uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Hi Lady Alessand is in her third trimester. Um, and the storms have cleared. So it is a beautiful day out. These two are in the courtyard spending some time together. Now she's still unaware that Lord Adrian went to the palace really late at night but the king hasn't summoned her or anything like that so adrian again she he wants to talk to the king again hold on a second but alicent is ready to have this baby she wants to embrace lord adrian so she's feeling in a she's in a good mood what's this she's sad from lord adrian being sad i'm assuming because he was feeling insecure he wants to yep just He's giving attention to the baby. Maybe a part of him feels guilty because they had a fight over the fact that he doesn't think of the heir in the way that he should. He's more kind of concerned about the heir being a deterrent than being their child sort of thing. So they had an argument about that and I feel as though he's trying to step up the fatherly game um, ever since that whole fiasco. But he also wants to chat with King Yorick again. Last time he tried this, he was a bit of a wuss and he barely even complained to the High King before he hightailed it out of there. So I honestly don't know. She does want to give him some attention though, so she's going to embrace him. Okay, come on. She's gonna embrace him. Here we go. Very nice, very nice. And let's see, anything else to do with him? Not really, she's just ready to have this kid. He wants to ask to feel the baby, so he's gonna go and do that. There we go, there we go. I mean, I when I look at these two, I almost wonder if it's genuine between them. It almost feels like this place looks like a dollhouse anyways, but it feels as though they're trying to just play dolls, you know? It doesn't, doesn't feel... They're always trying to outsmart each other. It doesn't feel authentic. He's going to ask the baby's due date. But is he really asking the baby's due date, or is he asking when the deterrent's going to stop working? <laughs> okay, he's going to converse with her, though. It's a beautiful day out. He's trying to be smart about it. He's trying not to ruin things. So she's letting him know that she's close. And he, he definitely wants to go. Look at that. I mean, he feels great about her. We know that. <laughs> we know he does. Actually, let's check out the sentiments he has with, um, with his wife. So he's smitten. Um feels deeply connected and is close from happy memories. She's also deeply connected and smitten, but I don't know, guys. I don't know. Is it is it genuine or is it not? Um, but okay, Alessand. Are you going... Does he want to go back to the palace? He wants to go back to the palace, apparently. Because um, you wouldn't be able... To, how would you be able to invite the king and queen over? I don't, I don't really think you'd be able to invite. If they wanted to visit, they could come, but yeah. It's not as though we have a big celebration or a wedding or anything like that anyways. So really, if he wanted to go visit, he would have to go sneak to the palace again. Um, and is that something that he wants to do? I'm not entirely sure. He, I mean, he does want to do, but how's he going to do it? The first time failed. First time failed. I don't know if you want to miserably fail again. That would just be ridiculous. Um, the royal family is going to think you're a bit of a joke. Um, so, these are dangerous waters, and I don't know that they want to walk in that direction necessarily. Alicent, can you actually, why don't you practice some magic? Let's go and practice some mischief magic. They have been gaining some skill though, so that's good. Let's see. Let's get both of them to practice their magic. He's also been doing his domestic duties quite well. Um, how much food do we have? Hi Lady Alessand and Lord Adrian just sat down for breakfast and it looks as though Alessand is ready to have this baby. Both of them are ready of course. They're both kind of just excited for this to finally take place. She has the whim for it. Lord Adrian has the whim for it. 
for him because it's the summer season. Don't know how that makes sense. But regardless, I am going to get both of them upstairs. She's fed, so that's good. We need to get to the birth chamber. So let's go here. We'll get Lord Adrian to sit down over here, hopefully. <laughs> he's freaking out. Yes, he's freaking out. Oh my goodness. He's being very nervous about this. Um, I wonder why. I really wonder why. And oh my goodness, Alison. She looks like she's about to explode. She really does. <laughs> Compared to our other sims that we've had, she is huge. Okay, let's get her ready to go. And I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. Uh, let's go ahead. Okay, he's right over there. We're not gonna wait. I have my names over here, my names list. Is she, is she gonna have a boy, a girl? Now, one thing to note, which I kind of am loving the random skins for as well, if she ends up having a blue baby, like one of the skin tones of the royal family, then obviously this child is going to be something that the royal family members approve of because, like we discussed last time, diamond skin is part of their motto. And so they find blue skin to be beautiful and they're the only ones that have blue skin in Sakaar. But if this baby doesn't have green skin or doesn't have Alison skin, Adrian's probably going to go crazy from jealousy. <laughs> He's probably going to be like go crazy if the baby doesn't look like him. So let's go ahead and have the air. Is it going to be a boy? Is it going to be a girl? We have yet to have... No. We have had a boy. That was Master Valar. Yeah. So we've only had one boy and he was a noble. So, are you gonna have another boy or another boy? Okay, another boy it is. Well, this is going to be Master, and the name I'm gonna choose for him is gonna be Diamond, Master Diamond Sisita. And this name was suggested to me by Katie Weiser, so thank you so much for that. It's kind of cool because Diamond Skin, Master Diamond. Let's hope this baby ain't blue. Let's go ahead and have a look. It's a green baby, okay. Excellent, excellent. Adrian is probably gonna be really, really happy that the kid looks like him. And there we go. Excellent. Okay, give some attention. Let's give some attention to the little baby boy. So we have Master Valar in Ramong, and then we have Master Diamond in Sikar. Nice. So at this point in time, all of our royal families are having girls and all of our noble families are having boys. My goodness. See, that would work out perfectly if they weren't all firstborns because then they could, in the future, be paired up with each other. But it doesn't work for our firstborns. All of the firstborns are going to be heirs and so they can only be matched up with second or thirdborns. They can't really be matched up with other heirs because they have to continue the family name. Okay, well, Adrian, he, he didn't even stick around. I mean, yes, he can't do much with the baby right now because Alessand is with the baby, but still. He didn't even stick around. He, he just left. He up and left. Okay, little baby, let's let's take a closer look at him before we head off. But, oh, uh, look at you. You're gonna, you're gonna cause so much problems between your parents, child. For various reasons. But okay, with that said and done, I'm going to leave off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.